Okay, this is part three of my intro to Fathom Analytics deep dive. In this video, we're going to take a look at two things. We're back on our demo site dashboard, and we're going to look at two sections. One is refs, and the other is UTMs. I wanna start with refs, and you'll find refs under the section to the right of refers. Now let's look at one actually, their demo uh, that they make available it's because it has more data in it. By default, refers shows like the search engines or the websites that are sending you traffic. So think of like Google, DuckDuckGo, Bing, Reddit, Twitter. You can see those types of things here. You don't have control over refers. Anyone can link to you from anywhere and it will appear under your refers. However, what you do have control over are your refs. And it's called refs because you create it by taking any link, adding a question mark at the end, putting ref equals, and then what you want to appear here. Let's open up our text document once again and take a look at what that URL would look like. So for me, my site is convology.com. So I would include a link somewhere to convology.com. And then I would put the slash question mark ref equals and the site that I'm linking from. Now, what you want to keep track of is going to be up to you. Like I mentioned by default, the ones you don't have control over are the big refers like Google, Twitter, probably even YouTube. But just like our example here shows that they on this demo site have a listing on Product Hunt and they put in their link question mark ref equals Product Hunt, they can very quickly see how many visitors come from there. Now that's not to say it still won't appear under refers because if you go over to refers and you look, it does, right? There's Product Hunt, it's the same data. However, refs is somewhere that I think you can use to track the, the referrals that you want to track. So for example, if I wanted to see how many people clicked on my link from, let's say a comment section, I could put something like YouTube comments, something like that. And then I would be able to see how many people came to my site, not only just from YouTube, but from YouTube comments, or I could make this something like YouTube description. And then I could come to my refer section and see, oh, okay, I got, you know, 5,000 people from YouTube, but under my refs, I could see, ah, and it looks like 2,000 of those were from the description and 3,000 of them were from the comment section. So it's a really nice way to be able to track and identify with more specificity that you totally control where your traffic is coming from. And then what's really neat is, of course, we can click on our refs just like anything else in our dashboard. And you can see up at the top, ref is product hunt. And you can see what pages they went to. You can see what types of things they did including what types of events they completed. So this is a great way to set up tracking for a funnel to determine whether or not linking from Facebook or that one particular Facebook post that you made or whatever you're doing, whether or not that's actually leading to something that's moving the needle, growing your business, being effective, or whatever your goal might be. Now let's take a look at UTMs because they're very similar to refs, except it's like refs on steroids. So UTMs allow you to assign variables for campaign, source, medium content, and term. UTMs are kind of a global thing. I actually think, I could be wrong on this. I think Google purchased like the original creation of UTMs, but they've kind of like become these universal tracking things that everyone can use now. Um, I mean, they're essentially in your URL, so anyone can build something to track them. But you see UTMs used a lot more in advertising. And that's because in advertising, it makes sense, right? You'll have campaigns, sources, where your ads show and the type of ad and the content in your ads. So for me, I got my start using UTMs when I was running Facebook ads because those just scream the use of UTMs. However, they have many other useful cases as well. So let's go over to Fathom's website and they've got a nice write up about the different types of UTM parameters and how they recommend that you use them. For members in Confology, I actually have a complete workshop on how I use UTM parameters and my recommendations for using them in your analytics for tracking. I definitely recommend you check that out. We're gonna look at the source campaign, medium term and content. So the source they're saying is the site or the platform where the traffic is coming from, like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, etc. The campaign, is what are you trying to do to drive the traffic? Is it a sale? Is it a free trial? What is it? And something I wanna quickly point out, notice how they've put a plus sign here between spring and sale and plus between free and trial. 
you need to do that in your links so that the analytics know this is two words and that's meant to be a space. Moving on to the medium, that's the marketing channel. That's what's driving the traffic in more of a category type way. So for example, if it's an ad, the common terminology is CPC for cost per click. If it's Twitter or Facebook, you'd probably want to put social. If it's something that you sent out from Fluent CRM or Active Campaign or MailChimp, it would be email, right? You're kind of getting the picture here. Term is something, term and content, they get used a lot less. However, I do think they are valuable, particularly in advertising. Term is for like the keywords you're using. So for example, I just helped a client with advertising about their limousine service. So the term might be limo, limousine, something like that. Content I actually find more useful uh, than term because this is the specific content that was clicked. And I use this more in email marketing when I'm sending a big campaign or building a big campaign uh, for a big funnel. I'll use UTM content so that I know which link in my email was actually clicked because oftentimes we put multiple links in an email and what if they clicked the top link or what if they clicked the bottom link? This you could put in here to say, you know what, this was the footer link or the top link or the link in the such and such section. And it's just a great way for you to know what is working inside of whatever efforts you're deploying. Okay, so back inside of the UTM section, there's actually a little button here. It's kind of like blends in, but it says build. If we click on that, it's going to open up a UTM generator, like a builder that Fathom has created to help you build these links so that you're not like coming into here and saying, so and UTM underscore campaign equals blah, 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 ampersand UTM campaign. See, so you don't have to like do this manually. Instead, we can just come here and build our URL. So let's build one really quickly. So here I'll build convology.com. There's my website. Now the campaign name, remember this is kind of like what you are, what promotion you're running, what's the, what's the effort you're trying to track. So this for us could be something like our pro promo. And I didn't mention this yet. I like to keep all of my parameters lowercase. I actually don't know if that matters, but I think it's someone told me it was a great practice and I've just adopted it and it's been super helpful. So keep it all lowercase. Um, that way you're not mixing it all up. All lowercase, that's the way to go. Now for our campaign source, this is where the traffic is coming from. So we will put YouTube and the medium. This will be, I don't know, would you consider YouTube a social media platform? I don't know. That can be argued, but we'll put social there. Now content, this is interesting content. We will put, we'll put description, right? So like if we were using UTMs to track description clicks, this could be comment section, something like that, but that's totally fine. And this also brings me to the next thing, right? The first tip was keep it all lowercase. The next tip would be really do your best to keep things consistent in UTMs. So for example, if you put social, don't then put social media in another one of yours as the medium, because then you're going to have two different mediums for really the same thing. And the same thing would be here, right? If I put description versus description box or something like that, I would want to keep it consistent. Now the campaign term, well, this could be maybe the topic of my video. And again, I'm just using this YouTube thing as an example because I'm making a YouTube video, but I could put something like uh, Fathom videos, something like that. Fathom videos, these are all about Fathom. Perfect. Now look down below there, you see that there is a URL and instead of having to make that whole thing by hand, we can just click copy URL and they made it for us. Now Fathom is not unique in creating this tool. Google actually has a really good one. There's, there's a million of them. You can Google them. They're all going to do about the same thing. Um, but we're just going to copy this and it's right within Fathom. That's pretty cool. Okay. So I went ahead and I visited that link that I made and let's take a look at what came inside of my Fathom analytics. We're in the UTM section down here, and here's my campaign, the pro promo. I had one view. The source was from YouTube. The medium was social. The content was the description section. And this was from my Fathom videos. Pretty cool, right? I think this interface here is so simple. Yes, this is completely present in something like Google Analytics, but it's not this simple. Here's what's really neat about this being such a clean one page interface here. I could go to content and it would say description. 
And let's pretend I had been doing this for two months. And every video that I made within the last two months, I put a UTM tag inside of the description section of a YouTube video and gave it the description content. So now you can just imagine that if I clicked on description and I had kept that consistent across all of my UTM links to my site, I could see, oh wow, the people that clicked on the description links went to these pages, completed these events right? Now you're starting to see how cool this is. And you could then take a step back and say, oh, you know what? Let's just look at YouTube in general. YouTube visits are completing these events on these pages. And now the tracking of your funnel starts to come full circle and you can realize the potential of utilizing analytics, even as simple as a one pager like Fathom. I hope that look at Fathom Analytics, UTMs, and refs was helpful to give you a big picture idea for how you can implement them inside of your own analytics. If you want to pick up Fathom, I've included a link in the description where you can get $10 off your first month. And I have an entire course coming where I walk through implementing analytics and using analytics throughout my entire funnel that I'm building that I'm releasing shortly. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or check out convology.com for more resources.